Hello beautiful butterflies and welcome back to Naturally Graceful. If this is your first time, I'm Nina. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about those of you who may have decided, yes, while I'm at home, I'm going to go gray. I'm going to let these gray roots come in and you're enjoying being at home in the comfort of your home dealing with your gray hair, but maybe in your area things have opened up and you have to go back to work and you're feeling nervous about revealing your gray roots to others. So in this video, I want to share some tips and some awesome quotes that you can keep in mind when you are getting ready for your reveal. It makes me think of a first, a child's first day at school. Um, we've all went through that, you know, the first day, the butterflies in your stomach. Um, maybe you have a new backpack, new clothes or something like that. And somebody makes fun or, um, you know, just lots of nervousness. So I want to provide the video to give you guys some tips on how to handle uh, that situation. So let's get into the slides. So I would love for you guys to let me know what tips do you have for those who are going back to work with their gray hair and they're really nervous. It would be really great. Remember that you guys, this is a collaborative effort and it's not just me, but it's also you guys. Uh, I had a beautiful butterfly basically message me um, this topic and I just want to thank her if she's watching right now because um, I didn't think about that. I talked before in a couple of videos about why now would be an awesome time to decide to do your gray hair transition, but it's also important to give you some preparation for when you go back to work too or when things do open up and say you left or started the time at home with colored hair and then you come out and people are like, whoa, what happened there? So we're gonna talk about some things that can help. All right, so I love this quote from Brene Brown. She says that courage starts with showing up and letting yourself be seen. Welcome to everybody who's just joining. Let me know what you think about this quote. I think it's true. When you decide that you're going to not dye your hair anymore. You are pretty much saying, I'm letting my gray be seen. And this beautiful butterfly that I spoke with, she helped me to come up with the title of my thumbnail. She was like, I'm done hiding. I'm done hiding behind uh, the color. I'm ready to just be free of that. Let me know if you guys feel the same when you started your gray hair journey. So I think this quote goes in line with that, that the courage comes from, you know, not hiding anymore. Now, this, the very first tip I feel to help you, and remember, there are many practical things that you can do. You can go and look up hairstyles. You can um, wear a hat, a scarf, whatever you're allowed to do at work to help you through that. But at the biggest thing I feel is mindset. We mentioned in the last video, you guys agreed that mindset is important in the gray hair journey. So this... I think I even spelled the man's name wrong. It's Zig Ziglar, Z-I-G-L-A-R. But I heard this quote. So last night I was watching a video that was giving YouTube tips um, for people who create videos and create content for YouTube. And his name is Sean Cannell. And he, uh, the title of his video was um, how to stop worrying about what other people think. And so I'm watching it. Mind you, this is for... YouTube tips, but I said to myself, oh my goodness, this is perfect. The principles of it, the mindset principles for the gray hair journey. So he had an acronym called FOPO, F-O-P-O, which means fear of other people's opinions. And he also is a quote lover like self. So I thank him for uh, these quotes that he shared. So this is the very first thing that you can do when you're thinking about going back to work or you're thinking about maybe even seeing your family. You haven't seen them in a long time. Maybe you're doing a Zoom reveal. <laughs> maybe they haven't seen you in a long time and they're going to see you on video um, or you're having a conference call. Stop being afraid of what could go wrong and start being positive about what can go right. I think that that um, the courage that we need for something doesn't come from ruminating or worrying about the things that we're afraid of. 
I think it comes from focusing on where we get our strength. And so if you think, you know what, some people might be surprised, but it may go better than I think. So kind of leaving that open to what the experience might be instead of guaranteeing automatically that you're going to get negative responses. So you can keep this quote in mind. And remember that courage is not the absence of fear. Let me know if you guys agree with this. It is feeling the fear and doing it anyway. I mean, just stopping uh, the dye anyway, stop coloring your hair is the first step in that. You may feel nervous about it, but you do it anyway. Um, So keep that in mind when you are going to work and you're dealing with the normal human emotions that come up. Because remember, let me know if you guys agree. When your roots are out, you feel exposed. You feel a bit vulnerable (laughs) and you're not used to it. If you're, our hair has been a darker color for most of our life. So we're also trying to break those beliefs where we feel old gray hair, white hair is synonymous with being old. So you can definitely feel like you're showing yourself by showing your roots, but um, you can still do it anyway. I love this quote from Lisa Nichols. She says, leap afraid. So that means that you're still doing an action. Your feelings might still be there, but you're still going and doing what you need to do, what works um, and what's best for you. And by the way, if you're watching that beautiful butterfly who helped me come up with this topic, please let me know how everything went. I'm not sure if she starts work this week. Here's the other thing that he mentioned in his video that I think applies also to the gray hair journey. Accept that you're going to get judgment, except that there might be some that don't like your hair, who don't like um, the gray roots. That is a real possibility. But guess what? This one kind of stung. And maybe when you guys see this next slide, (laughs) it might sting a little too. But let me know if this is true. Isn't this a truth? We all judge. We do. We're not supposed to. Um... Not all of us may be vocal with it and say it to other people, but we all have our preferences. Like, "Mm, I like this type of food. I like this type of movie, this type of music. I was just talking about this with my dad today. He taught me to love many different kinds of music, whereas my husband, you know, has his preferences of music that he likes that aren't my favorite. But at the end of the day, we, we all in some way, shape or form have our preferences. So it would be realistic to think that some may not like our decision to let our gray hair grow. And sometimes our choice in doing that, maybe somebody was thinking about it and they don't want to, and you might be triggering them in some kind of way. So just the reality um, that negative comments can come up. Here's another tip. Instead of allowing, instead of trying to feel like you can avoid all criticism or judgments. There was another quote he mentioned, I think it was from Aristotle that said, if you don't want to be criticized, then don't do nothing. Don't say nothing. Don't be anything. Then you'll be safe from any kind of criticism. And we know that that's not how we want to live. So how about letting the negative comments be a trigger to practice self-love, to practice having more loving thoughts and remembering what your truth is. So that way you're not nervous trying to avoid those comments, but okay, if somebody gives me a stare, if somebody says a sly comment, okay, I'm going to take that moment to take the attention even off them and their negative comment, but go and do what you need to do on the inside to remember your truth. And what are some truths? I like this quote from Byron Katie. She says, it's not your job to like me. It's mine. And that quote is, of course, in a bigger sense of, you know, the fact that some people, you may not be their cup of tea. (laughs) But even when it comes to certain choices that you make, I mean, think about it. Some of us might be more like even when it comes to like fashion, may like things that are a little bit more muted, um, a little bit more... um, warm toned, where some of us like bold, bright colors, you know, we're allowed to have our preferences and for somebody to not like those preferences. But if you like it, and if it makes you feel great, then that's, that's your truth. That's what counts. 
Also something to remember that you can tell yourself when someone says something that doesn't sit right with you is that you can tolerate that discomfort. It's going to sting for a brief moment and then you'll be able to move on. But think about this. I remember hearing a quote that said, like when it comes to change, sometimes what is the big catalyst to change is the pain of staying where you're at becomes more than the pain that comes from making the change. I don't know if I'm saying it exactly right, but let me know if you guys agree with that. So you may deal with the discomfort of a stare. You may deal with the discomfort of a negative comment, but isn't that momentary compared to if you really are in this place of, I want to embrace what's going on. I'm done with the die. I want to save money. This is what works for me. You just sticking with it because you want to avoid the comments or the opinions is going to wind up being too exhausting. And let me know if you guys um, agree with that. I know it did for me. It's like you, I did go through a couple of weeks of feeling insecure, but from where I'm at right now, I'm, I'm happy that I went through. It's, it's also, you could compare it to exercising. You know, if you're out of shape, it's going to hurt in the beginning <laughs> when you're learning new exercises muscles that hurt because you didn't even know that they were there and you're using them. But when you have that body, you know, or that uh, health and that stamina that you want after all that hard work, it's worth it. Another graceful truth is what others think of you is not your truth. So someone can say, I don't think you look pretty in that shade. I don't think gray is your color. You know, you let yourself go. But is that what's true for you? Do you feel like you've let yourself go or do you feel like you've let yourself free um, from having to deal with that? This is another Zig Ziglar (laughs) quote where he said, don't be distracted by criticism. Remember that the only taste of success some people get is to take a bite out of you. And I thought that was an interesting quote because um, Not everybody is like this. As we mentioned in another video about handling negative comments, some people unintentionally say things they don't mean to hurt you. And then there are others that is they're very well-intentioned to say something to get a rise out of you. So again, going back to the fact that that's not your truth. That's not your truth. So um, to recap what those three tips can be, to help you to have the right mindset to prepare you for people seeing your newfound gray roots is to think of what what good things can happen instead of thinking of all the worst case scenarios. Um, That can at least help you to not approach the situation with such heightened um, anxiety. Remember that if you do feel scared, it doesn't mean you're not courageous. You can still leap afraid. Um, And it takes courage to show yourself in a vulnerable place. And um, there is another tip. And this is what we're doing today. And this is what that beautiful butterfly did. She reached out to somebody, she said, who could understand the struggle that she was going through. So you have your mindset um, to do it anyway and to think of the good things that might be able to happen you want to accept that we all judge so there is that possibility that you make us some stares or negative comments Um, you also want to surround yourself the fastest way to build your confidence is surround yourself with those who support you so here on the live during the week um, not everybody has the advantage of having those close to them who are cheering them on on their gray hair journey so please let me know where you're at in your gray hair journey because I love when we get to the Q&A part when we clap each other up and um, you know for little milestones that other people might be like what's the big deal we're here to support you and let you know that you're not alone so having a support group is certainly a way to be able to help you to get through those hard times because look I talked to you guys the last time about the illustration of a butterfly when it comes out of the cocoon and how the the wings are weak and they're not real strong. It needs some time to build some strength. There are times in your gray hair journey where you're feeling like that and then soon you're soaring. You're soaring and you don't need as much 
as you did in the beginning. And then now you can help somebody else. Um, so when I mentioned earlier too, that there are things that you can think of that can go right as opposed to wrong, instead of focusing on the negative comments, maybe think of somebody who you might inspire just by the decision that you're making. Let me know in the comments if any of you guys have had anybody come up to you and say that, you know, because they saw your gray hair that way, you know, that helped them to make the same decision. I think that that is something I'm still surprised with when people come up to me and say, oh my gosh, you know, I see your hair. You helped me to, you know, take the plunge. And I'm like, it, it wasn't anything special that I did, except when we embrace what our truth is, then we make it comfortable and we kind of give someone else that space for them to be able to do the same. I think that's what it is. Um, because we talked to remember that beauty comes from that authentic place of feeling comfortable in your skin, how attractive that is. So don't let faux po, fear of other people's opinions, stop you from holding your head up high and um, stretching your wings and letting people see a different side, you know, helping them to change the narrative for them. Maybe somebody may not decide to allow their gray hair to grow, but maybe they might think differently about gray hair. And surprisingly enough, I know a lot of gray hair or silver sisters who it's helped their kids. Their kids were the ones who um, encouraged them to let their gray hair grow. And it helped them to be able to know that it's not just older ones who get gray hair, but also, you know, some young ones as well. So let me look on here real quick. Hello, everybody who joined. Hi, Star. My sister's on here. Hey, LA. Paula, Sheila, Wendy, Marianne, Dolores, Cassandra, Soul Child. What's your name? Remind me of your name, please. Okay, so let's see. My sister says, I'm not gray, but I know what helped me when I big chopped and was nervous about opinions is you wrote down on a flashcard every compliment you got and looked at it so you would focus so you wouldn't focus on the negative. That's a great um suggestion because I don't know if you guys ever saw something called now I forgot the name of the project. It's something I saw on Pinterest where people would write a note on a sticky so that, and put it on a mirror in a public place, um, like you're beautiful. And they would put it on the, the mirror so that the next person who came in and saw that, that would be a message for them. So we what we see around us does affect how we think. So if you have a, a eraser board or um, a mirror, I, I saw some tips about taking a dry eraser marker and you could write it on the mirror and you could uh, wipe it off. It doesn't mess up the glass. So surround yourself with positive images and um, things that make you feel good as far as so that you could tell yourself that so that when someone's negative comment comes up, like I said, not that it won't sting, but it won't it won't derail you. So thanks for that tip, sis. Marianne, you agree so many people, you know, see a few gray hairs and immediately don't like it. Instead of letting it grow a little bit, they immediately cover it. I was a part of that, Marianne. Um, and I think that's another thing that helps us to accept that not everybody will like. It. I mean, it just turned three years for me that I haven't dyed my hair. But before that, I was one of those who... I wasn't vocal about it. I didn't go up to people and say, why aren't you coloring your hair? Um, there was a woman in my congregation. I remember she would get braids and um, she mixed it. And I remember thinking to myself, oh my goodness, I don't know if I could do that. And her hair is so gorgeous right now. So long and salt and peppery. And she just told me the other day how much she loves my hair. And I'm thinking, I loved your hair. <laughs> so um when you're so used to covering it up and not embracing it, it can be hard. Um, like we have to understand that some people aren't at the mental space that we're at yet. So that kind of helps those things to roll off your back, as they say. Wendy, you gave some claps. <laughs> you just like looking different. 
that bracelet, that hairstyle, the gray hair that no one else has. There are no persons around you who like gray hair aside from your hubby. And you love being unique now. You used to want to conform. Thank you, Wendy. I'm glad you enjoyed the um, quotes and tips. I am going to have it available. Again, guys, the struggle is real. I remember seeing a quote that said, under promise over deliver. And I know I told you guys a couple of uh, lives ago that I was going to get a PDF for you. I, instead of having two different ones, I'm going to combine them with the quotes and stuff. And I'm going to give you a link so that you guys can have these. That can be your little um, note for your lunchbox <laughs> when you go to work and you're having um maybe a negative comment or you're feeling a little insecure, you can look at those words. You could put them around your desk. Again, wherever you are, if you don't have a desk, you can put them on your phone and you can look at them and they could give you a little bit of um, strength. <laughs> uh, but I appreciate what you said, Wendy, about how it does make you unique. Um, yesterday I was outside and I saw this blue bird. I don't know I don't know if it was a blue jay or not, but it was so pretty. It was different. It was unique to the different birds I usually see flying around and it caught my attention. And so I agree with you that gray hair is not necessarily the norm yet. So it does stand out. And it's nice to know that your hubby is on board because honestly, that's that's a close, intimate person. You want to <laughs> be on board with you. Okay, Dolores looks like she has a question. Has any ever used mousse to define their natural curls and had success I have Dolores and you know um is your hair as short as it is in the uh, profile picture because I'm now realizing how your length of hair can affect uh what products you use like I could get away with styling with mousse when my hair was shorter but as you guys see look at this look at how long my hair is getting <laughs> I don't realize because I haven't cut it um, like mousse right now mm -mm, for me personally. But um, my sister uses mousse. Oh, no. You said your hair needs a heavier hold, too. Thank you, sis. Hi, Grace. Oh, it's evening by you. Thank you for stopping by. Andrea, you said... You will be 55 on the 13th and you decided not to color your hair since COVID. Last color was on the 12th of March. Let's give Andrea a clap, guys. It's so nice to have you on here, someone who uh, is a newbie. And um, how's it going for you so far? Are you nervous about other people seeing your hair? Or how's the journey going for you so far? And Barbara, you're new. Nice to have you here. Welcome. You said you have gray at the top and on the sides. You're trying. It's a pretty gray, but the other part is not. That has happened. Negative people don't like it. Yeah. And what other tips do you guys have um, for Barbara here? Barbara, you know something I'm, I've realized uh, with my hair when I try to color it a different color? <laughs> um because my hair would be really patchy. And uh, ironically, when my hair was growing in, you could kind of tell it would be like this. And um, I didn't like my white patch. If you're just starting, Barbara, how far into your gray hair journey are you? Because sometimes that affects what you think about the gray that's coming in also. Let it fully grow out and you'll really get a better picture of how your gray is going to be. Thanks for clapping up, Andrea, guys. She says, so far, her husband loves it. You're getting a cut Thursday. Nice. Uh, tapered cut. What kind of cut are you getting? Hello, Tiffany. You said you have lots of gray. You never wanted to dye your hair. It just recently started showing more gray in the last five years. You've always embraced it, and you're happy to see women who are willing to be dye free. Thank you for sharing that, Tiffany. I feel like you and... uh. A, other people are um, very unique in that you've never colored your hair at all. My sister is going to be one of those too. She has little streaks coming in, but I think that that's amazing that you can fully enjoy that gray without having to worry about the transition from colored hair. And we have to remember that too, guys. We're transitioning. If you're deciding to let your gray hair grow in, 
it's totally different transitioning from gray from colored hair than someone like Tiffany who's just you know it comes in as a full strand like I wonder how my hair would have come in if it if I never colored it you know okay Barbara you just started also and Andrea you're gonna get a taper nice hi Sandra how are you today what are you guys thankful for today? I'm thankful definitely for being on here with you guys. And um, I'm also thankful for um, I'm thankful for being able to <laughs> figure things out. <laughs> you know how sometimes uh, you're stumped with certain things. I'm thankful for the support I have to help me figure certain things out. Shout out to my sister, <laughs> my little business advisor on the side. Um, but I want to let you guys know if you have any questions um, in regards to gray hair and the journey or you want to show me pictures like Andre, if you want to send me a picture of your awesome taper when you're done, please feel free to email me at Nina at naturally graceful dot com. I've been getting emails um, and they make my day just seeing uh, different women who agree with the fact that having a supportive community helps them. Nobody has, well, I'm not going to say nobody, but the majority have some dips and bumps along the way. And they've said what helps them is knowing that they're not alone and going to others uh, to help them through. I think I remember I had someone say they had a box of dye and they were about to dye their hair. Has that ever happened to you guys before? Oh, Wendy, I'm thankful that you're on here. How are you today? And I didn't forget about you with the newsletter. Hi, EP. You said to be here and healthy and finding your site. It's so nice to have you guys. You guys are awesome. Oh, my sister said I'm doing a good job. I was just talking with my sister and my mom on FaceTime. And my mom was so sweet. She just like came out of nowhere and was like, I'm so proud of you girls, you know, what you guys are doing and um, how you're using your strengths to be able to, you know, overcome uh, any weaknesses or different things that uh, you go through. And um, I told my mom how much my sister was like, she was my cheerleader to help me to do what Brown Brown said to have the courage to be seen and you need somebody like that in your life and not everybody has that and I'm willing to be that for you to pass it forward um somebody who could see potential that you may not see because you're so blinded or you know we tend to be our worst critic or enemy um but remember that quote I mentioned in last in the last live from Maya Angelou where she said you want to make sure she said the hardest thing to overcome is the way you think about yourself. So it's nice to have those who believe in you and who can encourage you to, they're basically just giving you a little push and then you just fly on your own, you know. Dolores, I'm so glad you're enjoying the tips. Tiffany, you're most welcome. Paula, you're thankful for the Silver Sister community. Me too. And you know, another reason why I love the Silver Sister community, not just to know that you're not alone and to help you through. It literally feels like I'm looking at, uh, um, I was going to say tapestry, but I don't, I feel like I'm looking at a mural of all these beautiful colors and patterns, like a mosaic. I don't know. I'm trying to come up with these words, but it's just, I never thought I would see so many different kind of patterns with gray hair and just how beautiful everybody looks. And from exposing myself to seeing so many different women and how they're going gray, I just like, I, I've changed my mind on what I thought about it before. And so this is what we have to be patient with others too. If they're not there yet where we're at, when they see our gray, it may take them a little bit of time, just like it took us some time. Marianne. You're telling Barbara you have the same gray on the top and the sides. So you play around with your part. It's funny. My sister-in-law does this too. And she says that 
depending on the lighting. Do you guys find that? Depending on the lighting, her gray hair looks a certain way, depending on how she uh, styles it. Perfect example, even with my hair, guys. I told you before about something called a Mullen streak, which is basically, um, actually, it's it's more, it's before I had a white streak, but now, especially when I stretch my hair out, I have a black streak. And you could tell it, tell that it's there more when my hair is stretched out. Sheila, you're welcome. Okay, good, Wendy. Sandra, you're thankful for your family and in-laws. Okay, Grace. Grace is coming from Africa. So nice to have you on here. Oh, I'm glad too, Andrea. It's so nice. I get excited. Like, don't you guys get excited if you find somebody else who's just starting their gray hair journey? Um, you know, they have these different programs like big sister or big brother. You kind of just take somebody under your wing and you're just excited for them because it's nice to have someone not only who's on the same page as you, like maybe you're both starting the journey around the same time, but it's actually nice to have people who are on the other side because they can help you get through those uh, different things that, that you went through. So I love this also. Okay, sis. Thank you so much for stopping by. EP Rogers, you said, really first time out with Grombre. You put on a headband, you did a silk press, so you have bright white streaks flowing through. You've been coloring for over 20 years. Thank you so much for that um, experience there. So how long was it recently that you went out? What was the responses? How was How was it when you went out there? Was it better than you thought? Marianne, you said, since finding your channel, you're the best part of working from home. Oh, thank you, Marianne. It's so nice to have you on here. Yeah, doesn't that sound beautiful? And it's it's interesting, too, when you stretch your hair, you might find, especially if you're natural, you might find that your gray hair pattern looks different than when it's um, when it's in its coily state. And I have my moments where I feel like straightening my hair guys but because of the way my hair sweats and we're going into summertime like I feel like that would be a waste like this is the most stretched my hair looks and I'm actually getting ready to wash it again because let me tell you everybody everybody's hair responds to products differently but gel is my friend <laughs> Like my hair has just been out in this kind of like free Afro kind of uh, stage. It's still coiling up, but it's very tangled, way more tangled than when I have gel on my hair. I've been using melanin um, leave-in conditioner to help soften it. It does soften, um, but I'm, I'm ready for my hair to be in its coily state. But I do like to see a little length. And this is not too bad. And this headbands are your friend. Who else wears headbands on here? I, I think the headbands are perfect. Sandra, you said you don't know any gray hair sisters. Everyone you know is still relaxing and coloring in your 61. Gotcha. So you mean you don't know anybody who's gray and natural? Or gray or natural? And you know what? Everybody's doing what works for them and, and there's room for everybody. Um, there, there are some people I know who say that like my grandfather, uh, my grandfather lived till he was in his early 80s and I think it was the last part of his 80s that he went gray. <laughs> so even as a man um, and my dad colored for a while, I think he might have colored longer than my mom. But now his his hair is beautiful and gray. So um, you have us, Sandra. <laughs> and I think that's nice to know. A lot of times the ones who you will find the support or understanding aren't right in your inner circle. Um, if you do have that, that is something to be thankful for, for sure. Um, my husband, <laughs> since we've been at home for almost three months, I can't believe it. Uh, his hair is growing out and um, 
we have some clippers ready to try and use, but his sideburns, and it happens even with men because my husband is mixed. So he, the gray sideburns, like it's colored toward the top, but toward the bottom where the gray is, it's all over the place. I take the Nature's Little Secret fa flaxseed gel and I have to like marinate <laughs> that gray hair to get it to lay down so um he's an example of how his colored hair behaves but the gray hair is like I want to go this way I want to go that way <laughs> Dolores you need to get some headbands yeah they're nice um I think some people and let me know if you guys agree some people may think that headbands are a little make you look young well I mean what's wrong with that right isn't that what we want <laughs> We want to look as youthful as possible. So I don't know. I love headbands. Um, this one I got from Amazon. So you can check out my Amazon store, uh, Dolores, and see if you like any headbands. This is a solid color headband. And then there's also, you know, a lot of different colors. And I believe I put in one of the videos about hiding your roots, um, how Ava did her hair. So there's different kinds of things that you can try. Wendy, you're in Trinidad, very few gray heads, especially women, lots of naturals, no relaxers. So Wendy, you're saying where you're at, there's a lot of women who are natural, but not gray. Hi, Tippy. Nice to have you on here. Let's give Tippy a welcome. You want to go gray, but your family keeps telling you not to do it. You usually do what you want, but their criticism is tough. I hear you. If you get a chance, Tippy, you can check out my tips that I gave earlier in the video. And I also gave some quotes. Um, Tippy, you might be the one to help change their mind about gray hair. And it may not, it's not, it may not be an overnight thing. Um, Cause I know even when, we went natural at first. Like my mom, I think was the last one to go natural. Um, and I was the first one. And my sister uh, said that she decided to go natural because of me. But at first they didn't feel that way. So I would say be patient with them to be. And I totally agree with you about the criticism being tough. Let me know if you agree with this to be that a lot of times the criticism is really hard to deal with because it also reveals how we might feel about something. But when we feel affirmed, I think I remember seeing this quote, like the more you love your decisions, the less you need other people to love them. Let me know if you guys agree with that. Um, I know it's easier said than done, um, but I hope the tips in the beginning and knowing that you have support here will be helpful to you. EP, you don't sweat in your head, but you're going to switch between press and curly. All of your friends and family are encouraging. I'm glad to hear that. Tiffany, your mother still colors her hair. <laughs> Wendy says to Tippy, be the leader, be unique. It will be beautiful. I like that, Wendy. Wendy, I like your enthusiasm for actually embracing being different because we are... Um, we hear more to blend in and um, we're all different. And, and I mean, you just look at creation and there's lots of variety there um, and it adds to the spice of life, right? Sandra, yes, you don't know any grays, but only one natural. You don't try and influence anyone. You're enjoying your gray tremendously. So Sandra, guess what? You are influencing people. I, I think I know what you mean, though. Like, you don't force your decision on other people. But by you enjoying your gray, you never know. Like, I honestly think that we all have a measure of influence on one another. Even if someone doesn't do what we do, we may even be able to help the way they look at me. Um, I know there's been maybe an outfit or a hairstyle that I see someone has that I think is gorgeous. I wouldn't personally use that for myself but I think on them it looks beautiful so you are influencing in a good way Tiffany you said grays can be unruly sometimes headbands and bobby pins are essential so Tiffany is your hair more salt and pepper or I forgot you how you said your gray hair is coming in 
Yes, Sandra, try them out. See how you like them. Now, the tip I will give if you guys, I usually don't let it out that much, but this is a headband I got at Target. It's like a soft material similar to what you use for like a satin, faux satin pillow or a bonnet. I make sure I put that under there to help with the edges. Um, but you see how this nicely covers it? Got my hoops ready to go. You're welcome to be. Okay, Wendy said, you're welcome. You started your gray hair journey at in 2015 at 41 years old. Your friends like died here. He said, amen, creation shows it all. God designs even our gray hair. He knows the number of our hairs on our head. He sure does. And um, I think realizing when I looked at creation that there is so much variety, I was like, you know what? That, that makes sense. There's so many different kinds of greens. There's so many different kinds of blues. There's so many different kinds of flowers, so many different kinds of butterflies, apples. I mean, like he, he gave us lots of variety. So we also express that in how we look and how our hair is. Tippy, you said you believe that. Thanks so much. Your gray are so many colors now, but if you could get it more uniform, you think you can embrace it. I hear you, Tippy. That is, like I said, growing your hair out from growing your gray hair, transitioning from gray hair, from colored hair to gray hair is not easy. There is an awkward stage and um, I am going to be doing a little bit more research because some have asked me, uh, you know, and let me know what you guys think about dyeing your hair gray. Um, I'm not against it. You know, you do what works for you. Remember, the best way to go gray is the way that works for you. But I feel like similar to being pregnant, you ever, you guys ever see that show on TLC? I didn't know I was pregnant. Like people just out of nowhere have birth pains and then they have a child and it's like, what? Um, so you kind of see the wisdom in the fact that you have nine months to kind of prepare <laughs> for uh, giving birth to a child. So sometimes I feel like the transitioning, sometimes if you just go all gray all at once it might be a shock to some um it might be just what they need so that they don't have to deal with that awkward stage but growth happens outside of our comfort zone right tiffany you gray on the side salt and pepper everywhere else you have a mohawk that fixed that problem okay it's so funny how even with with natural hair, there are many different textures. Like it's not all a certain texture or not all the same porosity. Um, in the same way, the gray can be different. Like I have lots of salt and pepper in the back. I'm noticing this side is getting whiter and it's gonna change even over the years. Like the way your gray hair is now is gonna be different. And I think it depends on your age. I did prematurely gray, um, so I think as the years go on, I'm going to see a difference in the way that my gray hair grows. But if you're starting later, you might be at a more advanced part of it. Sandra, you would have never thought about the headband. Yeah, headbands and headbands. Anybody else on here who has a short haircut? Headbands are not only awesome to help with, um, you know, hiding your roots, but I think it's also a way for me to express a different style with a short haircut. Um, you guys, if you've seen, I did a video on how to do a bun. And it's it looks a little interesting when you have short sides and a short uh, back. So when I put the headband on, it nicely helps the bun to still be the center of attention without worrying about uh, the rest of my hair. So I think that Headbands are also your best friend if you are dealing with a tapered cut that's growing out because you haven't been able to get to the barber lately. <laughs> Wendy, you said, Barbara, do your thing. <laughs> Tiffany, be bold, embrace your own beautiful you. Beautiful sentiments, guys. And like I said, I'm so thankful for the way you guys show up for one another too. It is it is nice to see as women because... Anybody who's had negative comments on here, could you let me know if most of them were from women or not? Um, to be honest with you, 
I could probably count on less than my hand the negative comments or smart comments uh, that I received from others. Most of the time they were women. Um, And unfortunately, we could be so critical of one another. I'm guilty of that. But it's just really nice to have you guys on here clapping each other up and, you know, helping each other out, giving each other words of encouragement. That's what we need. The silky headband, I'm going to see if I could find one to put in my store EP, but I got it at Target. Um, it's, it's in our section. <laughs> um, I forgot the name, the, the name brand. But I'm, when I find it, I'm going to put it in the comments for you, okay? Or if you do, EP Rogers, I think you've emailed me before. If you have, um, you could send me an email reminder and I could send you um, where you could find the silky headband. Because that is a nice buffer for the rest of the hair. Because I have a velour headband. Um, I feel like the headbands offer so many options for color. I will say going gray made me even more bold with color. Like even what I have on right now, when I look back at how I was when I was younger, I I stayed with neutral colors. And now I'm like, where's the color at? (laughs) And me and my sister were talking about this before the live. We were talking about how... She likes blush, more muted tones with with a pop of bold. Whereas for me, I like bright and bold all the way. <laughs> Thank you, Tippy. Marianne, you agree. You got a few comments, but surprisingly from older women in your 56. And that's something else too. I mean, when you think about it, right? There's so many different occasions in our life. I've also experienced that being a mom, a first time mom, you know, you have the old school ones who do things a certain way and like, honey, if that was me, this is what I would do with my children. And, (laughs) you know, we women can be quite vocal with uh, what we think about things and don't let it be family. They'll be so quick to voice it. I do remember a family member saying to me, like, why? I don't understand. (laughs) You know, um, they, they like to cover theirs up and I get it. I've learned that when I accept it and I even embrace that they're going to think differently, I don't feel as defensive. It's like, you know what? They have a right to their opinion too. They do, even if it's different from ours. Um, Because at the end of the day, what your truth is, is what matters, right? (laughs) Sandra said, LOL, and where's the color at? (laughs) Um... You know, so I hope you guys uh, keep this in mind. So I want to let you know, uh, we're going to be wrapping up within a couple of minutes. So if you have any more questions, please put them in the comments now. And for those of you watching in the replay, please let me know any questions that you have that I can talk about for the next live. This Thursday, I'm going to have a beautiful butterfly come on here and talk about some Ayurvedic herbs. So those of you who are dealing with thinning, who are dealing with um, hair loss, um, CCCP, is it CCCA, I think? Um, It's a form of alopecia. Um, This beautiful butterfly uh, has learned about Ayurvedic herbs, brews up her own. She helped her mom uh, who deals with the alopecia. So I can't wait to share her with you guys this Thursday at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, So I'm going to be interviewing her and giving some tips because a lot of people ask me, um, you know, how do I grow my hair? How do I deal with thinning and things like that? Now, remember what I said on the last one, my disclaimer, um, it's for informational purposes and there's trial and error. So you try it out for yourself with the expectation that it can, it may or may not work. Um, So in addition to using those herbs, remember there are other factors that affect the results that you get with certain things. But I am looking forward to hearing more of what she has to say. Um, I saw some picture progress of her mom's hair and I thought it was amazing. So I thought it would be Um, helpful for you guys who are dealing with that. I don't want to leave you out. Hi there, Deborah. You're 61 and get lots of compliments and could care less about those who are afraid to embrace themselves. Thank you for sharing that, Deborah. Um, Let me know what you think about this. I try my best 
to not say that those who are coloring their hair or who are not, you know, stopping the dye that they don't love themselves or that they aren't embracing themselves because I think that some of them are. Sometimes it could be based on a preference and they don't mind spending all that time or money, you know, to keep a certain look for themselves. Um, But I think we always can stand firm, like you said, Deborah, in what you, what works for you and focusing on those who do support you. Tell me if you guys have had this experience of all the negative things that people have said, I've had way more positive than I've had negative. Sandra, you said you've had family members ask when you were going to color your hair and your response would always be when you stop asking. (laughs) Thank you for that response. Um, EP, the time is 1.30 this Thursday at 1.30 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's when I'm going to be doing the live interview. And um, I will be putting up another reminder ahead of time so that you guys uh, can put it, if, you, if you're if you not already subscribed, um, so that you could get the notification. Yes, Thursday, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And also, Tiffany, way more positives. Great. I also want you guys to let me know in the comments, what are your favorite cleansers for your gray hair? I'm going to be, next Monday, I'm going to be talking about shampoos, cleansers. I'm going to be breaking down my gray hair routine, shampoos, conditioners, stylers, so that um, you guys can have, um, have that as an option to know what to use with your hair. And I always love pooling from you guys too. Um, if you know other products that I can include in this list for those who are trying to take care of their gray natural hair. Tiffany, you especially got more positives when you went natural. Ironically, I had I got way more positives when I went gray than when I went natural. People did love my natural hair. I remember in Walmart, this woman was like, can I just touch your hair? Like she just looked the curl. She took the curl and she just pulled and she's like, it's so pretty. <laughs> so I did have a positive experience with natural hair, but with gray hair, I think it just surprised me so much um, how many told me that they liked it. And Tippy, check this out. I got a lot of compliments during the grown brace stage, the stage when my hair was many different colors. So um, take heart and know that even if, There are some who don't see it through those pink glasses. There are some who do. Wendy, you've gotten, you've got, you have gotten when you went, you've gotten from people, when are you going to dye your hair (laughs) as you're five years in? That's funny. Tell them you're still going strong. And Tippy, you loved what Sandra said. You're going to borrow that. Have I... You've never done a live like this. Oh, well, I'm so glad you enjoyed it, Tippy. Again, I try to at least do once a week. For this month, I'm going to be doing twice a week on my lives. So please um, feel free if you guys like and subscribe um, to let others know about this if they need some support. Regina Cantu Bentonite Clay Mask. Thank you. So anybody else, make sure to put in the comments your favorite cleansers so that I could add that to a list of resources for future. Um, a lot of people ask me a lot what products to use. Deborah, more positives, especially men. You always look at the person's hair that makes the remarks. <laughs> I love it, Deborah. And Sandra, for you, it was 98% positive. So... For those of you who are watching this and you're nervous about going back to work, you're nervous about people seeing your gray hair, tippy, you're nervous. Look at this. The percentages were higher for positive than it was for negative. So it doesn't mean that you may not get the negative, but let's focus on the one that support us. And remember, this is your decision. It's your truth. It's what works for you. And that can be enough. That can be enough. Wendy, you said natural hair becomes us. It is natural to you and gray is the same. Very well said. Very well said. Okay, guys, I appreciate you coming on here. I appreciate your support. Again, let me put up my email for you guys. 
I think I put it here. Here we go. Any questions, video requests, if you want to show me where you're at in your gray hair journey, Nina at naturallygraceful.com. Okay, thank you also for sharing with me the things that you guys are grateful for today. I wish you a compassionate week. Uh, remember to allow space for how you feel. Forgive yourself often and also commit to one loving thought about yourself. All right, guys, I'll see you on Thursday.